Okay, we got we got Jordan Castro, uh, the novelist, the author of the novelist. Um, welcome. Uh, we you, talked before I hit record that I, I usually I, I go hard and then tone back when I start the interview, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go full, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know what like you're in what New York, right? Uh, New Haven, Connecticut, actually. Connecticut. OK, like uh, but like whatever yeah. the like shock jockey rock radio voice like we have. Uh, what is it here? Kiss FM, I think it is. It's, uh, you know, oh, it's sure. Full. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, Welcome outside yeah. the box. Yeah, yeah. Like I've changed the name actually from outside the box to uh, oh. Talk Talk is my new name. Okay, uh, welcome to Talk Talk. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's just fun to do. I got the low enough voice to pull it off, you know. Um, so uh, yeah, so I read the book uh, two times, uh, once a while ago, and then I stopped doing interviews for a while just because, you know. Uh, and then I read it on the plane from Toronto to Vancouver, and. Uh, yeah, it's it uh, was both times I read it in a single sitting, nice. and I was I read it since I read it like you, your agent or whatever sent me it early. Um, I was just curious. I was like, how are people going to respond to this? You know, um, and mm -hmm. I'm sure given the nature of the book, it it has this kind of. Uh, I, I, you said this on uh, on the on a podcast that I, I listened to last night, and it was like, um, it kind of has a built in like self defense mechanism in a way, right? Yeah, yeah um, exactly. Yeah. So how are you feeling now that we're like, it's been out two weeks now, I think. How are you feeling reading this Onslaught reviews? I read a ton of them today and they noticed things I didn't notice, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah, it's, um, it's been, it's been great. I mean, like I, I'm grateful and kind of like humbled with the sort of like overwhelmingly positive response, you know, especially even from places like Gawker, you know, which like. Yeah, that surprised me too, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> it really surprised me, you know, and like, um. Um, I almost felt like I did something wrong when Gawker gave me a glowing review, but I, and, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful. And I, and I, uh, you know, I don't know what to say. It's sort of, a, it's sort of a, yeah, humbling and, and I'm, I'm grateful. I definitely didn't expect, and even, you know, my editor and even like after, uh, you know, different podcasts that I've done, people have been like, you know, before the book came out, they're like, uh, you know, I think this is really going to be like a polarizing book and, and so on and so forth. And so far, you know, nothing, it seems like there hasn't been any kind of negativity toward it, at least that I've seen, you know, and so. Yeah, because um, I, I read the one review where the, I can't remember who it was, but it was one of the top ones on book list or whatever. And it, it started with, um, uh, when, since the book opened with, I opened my laptop, I thought I was going to hate this and that this would be polarizing. And then, and then it was a pretty glowing review. In the end. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe the haters got to take a little more time to get, get, get crafty with the, yeah, you know, with their, with their disses or something, but I, yeah, well, I, I'm, yeah, it's been great. Um, so I was, uh, I was reading another thing I saw on your Twitter um, related to uh, it was, it was about an author that, that, that wrote um, the woodcutters. I can't remember his name off the top um, of my head. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And uh, that like, uh, there's there's kind of this large sect of of like mostly Instagram but also Twitter really pushing um, theory you know the idea of theory and I think it just mm -hmm. comes from a lot of people who maybe got a humanities degree uh, and don't know what else to do with it um, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm just wondering like 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 what is your uh, like what do you think of as like contemporary literary theory. Um, Cause I know what was it the quote in the article is I hated literary theories more than anything in my life, but most of all, I hated so-called theories about the novel that was from Thomas Renault, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't read much of it. Um, there is one book that I read that actually um, helped me a lot with the novelist, which is called the art of being. And I think the subtitle was uh, the existentialist poetics of the novel or something like that. And, and it was like, so, and that's the only book I've read about the novel, and I and I love it. I, she, uh, um, it's by Yi Ping Long, this this professor at Johns Hopkins, and um, I mean, I generally speaking, I'm not uh, the biggest fan of like any kind of theory. I like reading philosophy, um, but in terms of, but you know, I like writing, and I feel like for me, um, sometimes like literary theory can. Um, can become this like dead language game or something like that with no stakes. And, um, but again, I barely read any of it, you know? And so I'm not really sure what the state of contemporary uh, literary theory is, but I, 
I do have general negative feelings for it. But besides <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. The, what the, about you? Um, I, I, I don't really care for some of it. I like, um, I like the idea of canon in general, not from like a mm-hmm. specific place, but just the idea of like uh, things that are, are cemented and that, and that their legacy is, is untouchable. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I don't see why we can't build on it. And this, I'm, I'm an English major and I've gotten a, a debate one time in class because um, I'm a bit older than everyone else. So uh-huh. they're a bit more internet brained with stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, it was about the idea of canon, and there, there was this discussion of removing stuff like Mark Twain or whatever, which is a really classic kind of beat to death subject. But um, and and I just don't, and I was just saying like, why can't you build upon it? Mm-hmm. Like you know, you I don't see the need for removal because it's 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 not. I mean, a book is physical theoretically, but it's not physical. It's not like a statue or something. You know, it's not taking right. up physical right. space. I don't see why you can't just add more stuff to it true very true yeah I've, I've i've wanted for a while to um well i've never read mark twain but i did go visit mark twain's house and um and uh and i sort of hated all of the um the quotes and like the witticisms and stuff that they had like on the walls and stuff like i felt like he was like uh but i had you know but i've never read him so i, I have no idea um but the the guy who gave us the tour was maybe new and didn't um he, he, he had a hard time remembering all the facts he was supposed to tell us. And so he, he would pause for like very long times before he'd be like, and he lived in this, in this, you know, he would hang out in this room with his seven, six, um, yeah, yeah. With his six brothers or something like that. It was, and so that was like a, a kind of great experience. This guy, you could kind of palpably feel him, you know, struggling to remember um, these, these facts about his life. But in terms of the canon, uh, I mean, I've wanted to read every book that, you know, in Harold Jones, like the Western canon. And I yeah, think that's that that's it, what got me. You talked about uh, on I'm just going to say it, on Red Scare, you talked about the the resentment or, or the yeah. resentment. And I was uh, so I looked into I the way I take like when I'm, I was walking home last night, I like text myself notes. That's how I operate, you know. Nice. So I looked it up this morning. Yeah. And yeah, sorry. Sorry. Continue. That's what no, no, you're good. Yeah. I, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that there is this strange seething need to like tear down you know to like i mean people are even suspicious suspicious of the idea you know of like greatness as such or like even judgment my friend michael clune wrote this great book called the defense of judgment that uh university of chicago press just put out and he makes this argument in the book where he says like there are humanities professors that would feel uncomfortable saying a statement like henry james reading henry james is better than watching the apprentice you know and his but his argument is that when you eschew your sort of responsibility to like make aesthetic judgments, what you, you know, for the sake of some kind of like dogmatic equality, what you actually do is you outsource that judgment to the market. So instead of like it resulting yeah. in quality, what it ends up doing is whatever's most popular is what's most best. And like, if you care about the literary arts at all, you know, that that's not true and it's a bad thing. And so, and then he also goes on to say like, you know, um, just by the fact of making a syllabus, you know, you're making these judgments you're saying like these these are more worthy of your time than other you know works and one should be able to like justify their decision you know what i mean justify the decisions beyond just saying like well i like this one more but what you like is just as just as good and you know what i mean it's uncomfortable but i think he makes he makes a good point well and it's i think it by not passing judgment you're 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 overvaluing the impact of judgment you know Mm, interesting say, say more about that like so so uh it, you know if, if you are what's the word you use like some kind of dogmatic equality um in terms of of uh i suppose grand sweepingly like like media including literature or whatever art i, I guess is a better word um you are you're 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 implying that judgment is a or or like proclivity or whatever you want to call it um is like extremely coveted and, and valuable and, and something that, that needs to be protected where it, you, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I think so. I think so. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. I'd be yeah, curious to hear you say, say more. Like, you, so, yeah. So, um, like, so yeah, if you are unwilling to say, I prefer this to this, or I, be, I believe with authority, because especially if you're a professor, you would hope there'd right. be at least some sense of authority. I don't see why you would get a PhD otherwise. 
right. um, in the humanities, at least, uh, like to not pass judgment. And not, not only does it does it give it to the market or to the to the sort of it becomes a numbers game. You know, so you need some kind of metric it implies a metric is valuable. But then what it yeah. does is it, it puts uh, extreme pressure on those that are willing to judge and, and almost will bol- bolster their voice, whether uh, whether it is like uh, something that agrees with that dogmatic equality or not. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things, one of the one of the, another interesting thing that that he, uh, I can't remember if he says this in the book or if I've just thought it, but like, it's I think he does. It's in, it, it, you know a lot of those same professors will have no problem whatsoever saying like one book is better than another, like morally, you know what I mean? But yes, there's nothing, absolutely. but there's nothing that uniquely qualifies English professors to be like moral judges. You know what I'm saying? It's not there's you know, and some yeah. of them. I mean, you know, I could go on. But some of them you know, seem partic- particularly uh, immoral, you know, I don't know, it's like, it's yeah. like, they don't have any play, you know, you can't justify, yeah, whatever, but I, but anyway, I, I, um, and I'm sort of coming to all this, like, um, later, like, I didn't have, like, a sort of, I didn't, I didn't go to school for this, and I, and I, um, uh, I just recently went back and got my undergrad, and I got an English degree, but, like, um, but I, but I sort of, like, when I was younger, I sort of, had that kind of resentment toward the canon or the western tradition or or things like that and and i've recently you know i've recently come around yeah i'm I, i'm i'm yeah i was not, talking not to a friend recently. Not, yeah i was talking yeah. to a friend recently about you know the term like poptimism in relation to music specifically right yeah. so like this and it's a i'd say it's a trade i, I would stem it back to like like when like Kanye's dark fantasy came out probably around then is when poptimism starts to like when hip hop sort of became the number one critical uh, like darling, which I would mm-hmm. say peak, well, maybe not peak, but really ramped up. I think that was 2010. Does that sound right? I think so. I think so. I can't, yeah, I can't remember. But yeah, but then you have like people who are, or I'd say like, like uh, uh, cool. I don't know. And that's such a shitty term, but like cool, you know, um, who kind of go, Oh, and it starts ironically culturally, not from an individual, but it's like a somewhat ironic relationship with top 40 with pop music where, but then they also keep an interest in, in more difficult music. And that I think has truly reached a pinnacle where the, there are these people who are cool and who I love, would love to talk to. I'd probably love hanging out with them. Um, but they have, they haven't even exposed themselves to more complicated music and, and like, you know, I don't know. This is good. Like, I listen to, like field recordings and shit, and that's that's sort of my pretentious or whatever way yeah. of uh, handling that. But I, and I also like pop music. But the pop to music optimism has made it like in vogue to and and almost scary to allow yourself to explore more experimental avenues of music. And I think that sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm 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 kind of unfamiliar with like uh you know, what's going on in music or whatever, but like, um, but yeah, I mean, I, th- I think generally speaking, it seems like there is a kind of fear or hatred of, of art, you know, I think like, like you were talking about metrics, you know, there's like, the, we want things that are sort of like, um, thin and like, you know, obviously agreeable to our like preconceived notions of sensibilities. And we want things that like don't that aren't like messy or confusing, you know. And like um, one of the things that I think is so great about challenging literature is that it can reveal things to you that like you hadn't previously um, considered or even thought to ask, you know. And like if you approach a work from this kind of like uh, cramped like perspective, um, then you know a work can't can't reveal itself to you. You can't sort of be 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 changed by the work or like see what it's doing or whatever. And I think um yeah does that make sense or does that have yeah. maybe it's something to do with what you're talking yeah that, that that totally makes sense yeah and yeah um and i mean that's where i i like that's kind of what made me want to go to school because i'm I, like i've always been good with challenging music and, and film but but uh you know i have the the brain of a of an internet person who has a hard time sitting down and reading anything like i mean i've read like you know easier shit like Stephen King and stuff but I was like I know these names I want to engage with these uh in a way where I am rewarded are you in school for uh for like literature uh yeah yes nice nice undergrad or yeah I'm I'm on my third year at the University of Victoria BC yeah 
Nice, nice. Yeah, it's going I like, good. I like, good. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, I like to go back to school. I like got to read Shakespeare. I got to like do a bunch of read a bunch of stuff I wouldn't have otherwise read. You know. And yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I took a Bible class, uh, which was nice. interesting. Uh, and that was very, that, sh- that is endlessly rewarding. Um, yeah. Totally. yeah. What did you, what did you, uh, what kind of like, what was it like in the literature department or the. Yeah. Cool. So it was like secular, but it wasn't, yeah. The, the teacher didn't present it in a, in the way I thought he would. It wasn't atheistic in the, in the way that I figured it would be. Uh, his interest mm-hmm. was definitely more towards the, um, old testament i could tell mm-hmm. um but but that makes sense because it has the kind of like um in the like king saga you know it's like a it's it's high fantasy basically like yeah it's it's the old testament's got that like uh got that epic uh i don't know i don't, I don't know how to describe it yeah it's, yeah it's it's wild yeah it's, it's extremely wild man i couldn't believe yeah. some of the shit in there like uh yeah yeah, like David asking for uh, like ten thousand foreskins and stuff like that. I was like, holy! <laughs> but bro, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of foreskins, dog. You know, there was a lot of foreskins, man. Yeah, I hit a control F on the PDF I had of it for that one, and it was like crashed my you, computer basically. You searched foreskin. Yeah, control F foreskin. Yeah. Nice. I love in the New Testament. I can't remember. It might be in Hebrews, or I think it, or in Romans. I think it might be Hebrews where. There's this one part where the, the, the author is like going on and on and on about like uh, how like, you know, like the old law said that everyone needed to be circumcised, but like, unless you're circumcised of heart, you know, then you'll never make it. Yeah, he, he, kept using word, he, kept, he kept using the word circumcision, but he was like referring to some kind of like spiritual circumcision or something, but he used the word circumcised like a bunch of times. And I remember the first time I read it, I was kind of like, it's kind of just laughing. Yeah. It, I mean, it is, it is uh, <laughs> funny kind of it's dark yeah. like historically sort of but like uh it is funny yeah um, there's a lot of funny 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 stuff in there yeah um okay. yeah i did not mean to bring up the fucking bible um <laughs> uh i love the i love the bible yeah it was, uh, I, it's last it's song morning yeah it's great yeah um and and the poems the poems in it and stuff are like unreal um mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so yeah, I have questions, but now, but when we just started talking, that's that's good. That's a good sign. Um, so uh, I was curious about. Uh, I guess I we already talked about this. So th- there's this in one of the classes I took, and it was Intro to, to American Literature. Uh, we read uh, Tommy Orange's uh, "There There." Okay, you familiar, you familiar with that? Uh, I haven't read it, but I am familiar with, with Tommy Orange. Yeah. yeah. And one of the things that a lot of the the people in the class said were like, I read all these books, um, and I and watch all these movies, and and I hate the way that they um, relay social media. It feels weird and forced and, and ugly and and wrong. Um, and uh, and they said that there there did a great job of it, but there there it takes place in a specific point in time. I think proto Twitter, okay. if I'm not mistaken. So it's it's mostly just Gmail and texting. Mm-hmm. um which is yeah that reminds me of like yeah like ta- earlier like towel and stuff and all that but um but yeah the novelist is like you know twitter instagram facebook exists in the uh in the world that it takes place in or whatever and i'm just wondering like what's what's your is this something you thought about when when, when you were writing the novel of how to because it's such a central point and, and more the relationship i guess with the uh, the um the, you know the the character's own relationship with it but like how to write social media basically what was your thought process yeah there? yeah i think i think um one of the things that i realized one once that once i once i kind of discerned that the book would take place only over the course of a of, of a couple hours um i still wanted to make it sort of like a page turner and i was like you know in order for that to happen there has to still be like just as many like action sentences there has to it has to be very kind of like active and concrete you know and I think like um I don't know I just sort of thought that like if I grounded the actions of using the internet as like uh, you know he I he click I click Twitter you know I click Twitter and Gmail unthinkingly like this kind of thing um and had the you know and because his relationship with it is so like tense and conflicted and so on like it sort of 
um, uh, what am I trying to say? It it was a, it was a, like a useful device to like sort of string the more abstract parts together and like ground it in some kind of reality. But it also I think is just it just never occurred to me to describe it in any other way than just sort of concrete and specific, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. It, it, all, it, all, it also reveals itself as sort of absurd when, when you're actually like mapping, like there's one part where he's like, he opens, he's going to change the tense of his novel and he opens a new document and like in, in the title of the new Google doc, he's like, uh, he types novel first person then deletes that and types novel then deletes that and types novel and deletes that and types novel first person. And like that kind of erratic stuff rendered concretely, I thought was was uh i don't know i just thought i thought it i thought it i thought it could work yeah and and i remember that scene in, in particular i was like that's there's a true universality because even like texting your boss saying i don't know i'm gonna cover that shift or whatever it's like i'll you know i'm going i'm hitting twitter i'm because it's like on my phone or whatever you know what i mean <laughs> right, right right yeah just trying yeah. to figure it out because it's this thing that i know i need to do in the case of the novelist it's you know write the novel but mm -hmm. But there's there's this more I don't I, I and, but I, I what I liked too particularly is is it doesn't seem focal like there's the easy kind of rhetoric about uh, immediate feedback and stuff and and it's you touch upon that if I recall correctly, but um mm -hmm. you know you 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 make it more personal I think than that. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, I haven't read uh Orange. I think he did an event with Tao actually. Now that I think about yeah, it. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. Think he wrote about that. Yeah. They uh they did a Zoom interview together. If I were, I think I watched it um when I had to write an essay about it or whatever. Nice. Yeah. It was uh it was interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't recall <laughs> much about it honestly, but yeah. Um, yeah. Also, so, yeah, town town. I, mean, I sort of like he used to describe it. I mean, he still does describe the internet like and stuff in like concrete terms. I think I got that from him in part. Yeah, I read. Um, what, yeah, what 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 got me to find your page or whatever was through him. Um, mm. I I found I just actually just came across. I was in the Vancouver Public Library and I came across um, shoplifting in American Apparel, and I just sat down and crushed it in the go. And I was like, this is uh, really like I actually read it initially and was like, ah, this was, I mean, I read it one sitting and that's good. And then it, I couldn't get it out of my head after uh, mm. reading it. I didn't have an immediate reaction to it. And yeah. And it was this artifact of a time that I'm old enough to remember that kind of relationship with the internet, but it's different now, you know, mm. but this kind mm. of blog, the, the, the capital B blog era or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Um, so uh, what was the, what was the other thing? I was on about um yeah so a lot of the reviews i read seem quite focused on the 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 scatological the the shit uh 22 pages i think it was shit scene man that's deceptive though they say 22 pages but there's a lot that happens you know he's using his phone he's having thoughts it's not it's not like uh you know it's not 22 pages of i mean i guess maybe it also it is 22 well, and pages that's I didn't notice that it was 22 <laughs> pages because other yeah because other things went down and I and uh, yeah. but I guess some people like in the in the Red Scare episode like um, Sasha <laughs> was was fix, fixated on on that a little bit and like uh, yeah. and when I was reading that I kept forgetting that that it was that and I, I but I can see how the way that it's described kind of gets in people's heads but what what got in my head was the scene um, I think the girl's name was Ashley in the book yeah where um, there's this sort of uh, this thing that begins as a memory and then becomes kind of this like nostalgic pseudo erotic humiliation thing. And then it just yeah. becomes like confronting how these people that you don't know you or might know blur together as the way that they present themselves on social media. And that, that, that mm -hmm. was the one that really hit me as being like, Oh man, I've done this. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. But I, yeah, my editor actually like it's so funny. Like on the um, on the uh, on the original jacket copy, she because she was like, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't be. Well, she was like, um, she was like, you know, what does this part like mean, or like what is it for? And I couldn't really like describe it. I just like knew that it hit. Like I was like, you know, this just kind of happens this way or whatever sometimes. But on the original jacket copy, it was like, 
it was like a misguided, like a, a memory of a, of a classmate, like leads to a misguided uh, search on social media, which leads to like an, ex an examination of class or something like that. And I was like, it's definitely not about about class, you know. But I, but maybe, it, maybe, it, maybe it is partly. I don't know. But like, um, anyway, I I, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I get that from it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I got class. Yeah. It, it said more about yeah. seemed more about like uh, uh, male. That, I mean, that scene in particular, like a uh, male aging. Oh, um, <laughs> and, and I guess like the the sort of uh, you transition into adulthood through the lens of of memory, and then at some point social media. You know. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah, I hadn't really thought too much about it. Just was like, you know. Yeah, well, and, and that's yeah. I just I wrote down in my notes. It was just like this, uh, this thing, and then I've never thought about it in my, in my own way. But it's like memory, vaguely horny, and then kind of uh, hate, hateful searching. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's strange. It, yeah, it's strange. I mean, the narrator, I feel like, in a lot of ways, is kind of like this impotent guy. You know, like he he wants to write and he can't write. He has this like vaguely horny thought and then he just looks and just sees, you know, like how, how much fun these well-adjusted people are having or whatever, you know, and or perceives um, them to be well-adjusted or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's strange how I, maybe, maybe before social media, whatever, you just have that thought, that memory. And I don't know, maybe it would just go away or something. And now you can kind of like almost interact with it in the world but it's just on the computer. yeah you can create all the subtext under it through mm -hmm. this person's future and i can't yeah, i saw somewhere too you said something like or i think maybe it was in the book and it was like uh the past is the present because the story is always changing or something like that Do you know what i'm talking about oh maybe maybe it was in um in an interview i did where i just talked about how like um it's this idea from c.s lewis actually where like he says something about how um you know, people say you can't change the past, but you actually can change the past. It's just totally dependent on what happens in the future, you know? Yes, and so like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think his example is that like, um, you know, for a person, yeah, because he's, he's, I can't remember what book it's in, but he's like, he's talking about heaven and hell. And he's, I think it's in The Great Divorce, actually. And he says like, you know, for people that choose heaven, everything in their life, even the worst things in their life will seem like it led toward heaven and they'll be right, you know? And for people who choose hell, everything, even the good things that happen will seem like it led toward hell, you know, and they'd be right or whatever. And so like, you can kind of retroactively interpret the, your, the things in the past, you know, based on what happens in the future. And so, yeah. 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 That makes sense. And like, you even think about it, like, um, like ex physical exercise is like a direct um, interaction with that idea and that it's, it is theoretically painful and unpleasant, but uh, right. you, you are investing in a better, future or something you know right right but if you stop like i don't know somehow if somehow you were in the middle of like you know trying to get some heavy weight up and your muscles were burning and somehow time froze and you were just burning forever you know what i'm saying then that, then that would be it'd be a much different thing than if you finish the rep and then you know you feel better you know you're looking good or whatever yeah um yeah <laughs> and that's where i guess the seemingness comes in because if, if you're so fixated on the you know the, the pain in the moment or whatever I guess that's more of a present feeling but that's you know kind of a never-ending cyclical kind of conversation both the past the present future whatever but yeah mm -hmm. um but yeah that scene yeah the it, like uh it hurt my feelings in a weird way because I don't know if I have any memories like that but I was like I feel like I do of uh hearing some girl talking I didn't I, I found a I focused more on the part where all the, the dudes look the same I have a quote here from it um, people I knew in high school became flattened, mashed together with these strangers into a frozen, uh, frozen vacation themed mass. I hadn't been on vacation in years and I became aware of how little my morning resembled a vacation. Um, but prior to that, there's a, let's see if I have a PDF open. I don't, um, yeah, she's, she's talking about how big of a, of a dick that she sucked. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, it made the, the, the narrator's memory reflect reflect on how they felt at that time yeah being deeply humiliated or whatever or yeah. or at least like confront being like i've never this is now something that i process that this matters or that this is a thing yeah yeah definitely i mean i've had i've definitely had 
<laughs> I don't know why I wanted to feel. I, 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 I'm remembering now for the first time in a very long time, like being, I think I was 11 or 12, maybe even younger. Um, and I remember I was in choir class and this girl was like talking about how she had given head. I asked, like, I guess over eagerly, like I asked if the guy had pubic hair because like at the time I was like, I didn't, I was trying to like navigate whether or not it was like normal to have pubic hair, I guess. Yeah. And, um, and apparently I asked in a way that like, uh, I don't know, everyone just called me gay and like, uh, <laughs> I was like, why are you, why are you asking about that or whatever? Um, but I'm just remembering that for the first time, right? <laughs> while yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. These are the things. Yeah. These are the things that, yeah. But, but you know, that probably had an influence on your future, but whether or not that sent you towards hell or heaven is, I don't know, up to you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For let's sure. Just, let's just say it's heaven, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I was wondering about uh, the, the, I don't really have a question here, but I was struck by this too. And it's this, I've heard people say shit like this. Um, I remember reading something, I think it was J. Cole recorded himself rapping all of Illmatic by Nos and like memorized oh, memorized at one point and that reminded me like that's that's what came to me when there was the 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 narrator um that's the correct term right the narrator is the right the right uh, like yeah yeah, yeah. 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 yeah yeah um the narrator talks about lying about copying uh less than zero is that was it that was that was the yeah. book right yeah yeah, yeah i uh, think so yeah, that was, yeah. um I was wondering just like it just seemed like something yeah wh where did you do you know what the genesis of you writing that down in the novelist came from yeah yeah I do it was just true I just did I just actually that actually just happened to me like I I was like I don't remember where I got the idea to copy down writing that I liked but I was was but yeah I had started to do it with less than zero and then um you know, and then and then I was with some people and I was like, yeah, I told them that I had copied down the entirety when I hadn't copied down the entirety. And um, but but I can't remember where I got the idea to copy writing that I liked, you know. Um and I haven't done it in a while, but I do think that it's it's uh who was it? Someone was saying I was it, I can't remember. I mean, I know that Hunter Thompson, and I think I wrote about this in the book too, like copied the great gatsby because he wanted to know what it felt like to write a masterpiece. And I do think that um, I believe that he did that too. I, I believe him. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, and that's interesting what you say about Jay Cole. You know, um, because I think that's that like that a half remembered before. anecdote I read on a forum probably like eight years. Sure. Ago, but. Yeah, but I, but but I mean, like, it's interesting because I feel like a lot of the time people try and obfuscate that aspect of like learning how to do something, or even of like the desire to be a writer or a rapper uh in the first place you know like it's like you you, you encounter Nas and you, in some ways you want to be Nas you know like I I am um, or like for me like you know I wanted to like you know be these different these different people at different points in my life and and um yeah it's important I think it's, I think imitation is uh kind of unavoidable in, in certain ways yeah and I think um you can lose a bit of the creative okay. impulse by being unwilling to be unoriginal or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, I just think, it, I just think it's, I just think it's unavoidable in a certain way, you know, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I, I, I talk about him too much, but I, I love this guy, Rene Girard, and, and he writes a lot about imitation, but I was even, I was reading this book uh, the other day by uh, some French psychologist or neuroscientist or something about uh, uh, the mirror neurons in the brain, you know? And so he was saying that like, you know, the way we even learn language is through imitate, like before we can even think or speak, like we look at, you know, adults' eyes and they move toward an object and we imitate them and move our eyes toward the same object, you know? And he was saying like for, for a long time, you know, they thought we had like the sort of rational brain. I can't remember what part of the brain this is associated with, but it was like the rational brain and the emotional brain but he was saying that like with the discovery of like mirror neurons, um, you know, which is that like, when I see you do something, the same neurons in my brain light up as if I had done it. And he was saying that there's this other brain, the mimetic brain is what the book is called, that yeah. like uh, sort of undergirds all the rest of that. And, and um, yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, that's something I became somewhat conscientious of uh, recently in that, like, just, like, putting on a... I see the way other people put on a jacket all the time. I don't know why this is a thing that strikes me, you know? And I'm like, there's no fucking way I put on a jacket like that. Bro, it's like, so when seamless. people put both arms in and flip it over, do you know what I'm talking about? They, like... Well, yeah, they that's put... insane. <laughs> that's crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. But just in general, like, the, the, the way that people don't, like, think about it, and do it and i'm like i'm always just like anything like that i always stress about like putting on shoes putting on jackets it's like it's a pro- like <laughs> am i doing this right you know um yeah, yeah. and that's where i yeah. my mirror neurons either have succeeded and to and are firing at all cylinders or have failed completely i don't know i haven't like filmed mm-hmm. myself putting on a jacket and showed <laughs> the people you know being like does this look normal does this look yeah normal? <laughs> that's funny yeah yeah I feel you. And I don't know, yeah, I got a bit of like a, a bullyish younger brother who will often give me shit about little things like that, you know. And, uh, and how much younger? He's two years younger than me, but he's he's also the same height and he got a hundred pounds on me. So of of a uh, of fat and muscle, if you know what I mean. <laughs> fat. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Dude, it sounds like sounds like he's got a week, but you could start, you know, poking him and stuff like that. Or <laughs> nah, it's it's uh, he's he's figured out a way to to make it work for him. You know, he's a yeah 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 definitely. he's killing it. That's man. Good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's uh those little and this reading this book um reminded me of those those type of neuroses in a lot of ways. You know, um, mm-hmm. but there's the universality of the of the the computer, the laptop kind of aspect of it, right? Um. Mm talking about yeah originality i had a through thread from that um but we got there i guess naturally uh i there's a scene in the book that i i quite liked and you didn't use the term which i thought was good but i literally went like the character finds almost like a very brief nirvana uh by touching grass basically you know what i mean (laughs) yeah true 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 uh and i like that cuz i had to i had to do that today too like i was like oh man i can't keep checking my email i got to <laughs> i got to touch grass uh yep and, yeah and it worked but then I, but then the second i started opening the email again it was over it's a struggle it's a struggle out here for sure um yeah. yep yeah i love going to the woods and uh going to the gym helps i feel like but um yeah, I felt very um, aware of, um, you know, the fact that the narrator, like, goes out into the woods and then, like, has, like, some kind of experience, but I think, I, I yeah, I tried to render it in a way that wasn't, like, uh, you know, that was sort of, like, true and meaningful as opposed to, like, cliche and trite or whatever, but using yeah. the phrase touching grass more would have been funny i hadn't thought i don't think i i finished the book a long time ago like and yeah, i, don't I think heard you finished it in 2019 is that right well, yeah first draft like, yeah i finished the first draft in like the in like january of 2019 and so um yes yeah, so i don't think touching grass is a thing like that okay yeah i don't know when yeah. where that genesis but it's it's been uh i don't know it's very funny i like it it's it's, yeah. it's it can hit so me but but rings so true you know simplicity of uh mimetic language i guess that's yeah um yeah uh i was gonna ask you did you listen to the new uh drake album dude i listened to like the first one and i was like uh i was I, i i absolutely hated it and then my friend's girlfriend was like, you got to listen to this other song. And it was something about like the, the. I think he says like, I don't even want to say it. It's so horrible. I think at one point he says like the whiskey is calling my name and then he switches it to something else. But yeah, it's he's like, talking to, it's he's talking to a vagina in that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, and I was like dude, you're like 40 or like 45. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it I was happened like, quick. this is just bad. Yeah. Yeah, this is sad. You know, like you shouldn't be like serenading uh, you know, women's genitalia or whatever when you're he's gotta figure it out. Man. Yeah, it is funny though. Yeah. <laughs> that maybe I got when I was um I, I listened to it once and then I thought it was it was a bad direction for him. And then yeah. uh 
I listened to it pretty hungover in the shower, and the kind of tropical housiness of it just kind of like hit nice, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I haven't listened I, to it I'm since. A, I'm like, I'm um, I'm not a Drake hater. I like, I think he's like a. He knows how to write. Yeah. You, I mean, you wrote an article in 2014 for Thought Catalog, I think it was, uh, <laughs> praising Drake. Deep cuts, yeah, 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 I did, I did. Um, that's why, I, that's why I added this to my. Little oh yeah, it was show. called. I can't remember what it was called. I, you know, I think I used to hate Drake, like when I was younger, like when I first heard him, and then I started liking him. I can't remember what it says in that article, but I, I uh, it was just like take care is really good, basically, is what it comes down to. Like, I think I think that's probably. I haven't listened to it in a long time, but yeah, yeah, I yeah. haven't either. But I it mapped out my experience. I like, uh, I don't know how old you are, but I think we're probably close to the same age. But um, twenty twenty nine. Twenty nine. Okay, yeah, I'm twenty seven. So yeah, nice. mapped out a similar experience to me hating drake and then take care kind of having this like being like you know, the the question in your in the article i guess that was eight years ago 2014 okay um was uh it, it, is it oh like he can be soft and he can be hard i guess i can be both you know basically was the thesis which yeah. i thought was very funny yeah yeah because i think um i think um I think I was, I think at first my the you know the idea about Drake was like well he tries to be hard but he's actually soft and then I realized that he he actually knows that about himself and he's actually like you know consciously like uh, you know integrating both both sides into like into his music or whatever. Yeah. Kanye did something similar to it, but yeah. Um, and Kanye's kind of always been doing that, but Kanye's confidence is always been so skyrocketed high and his vision is like frankly a way bigger than drake's like oh yeah yeah, yeah it's not even i i i absolutely love Kanye west and uh yeah me too when you're talking about even... emulating people like the only person i really want to emulate is kanye which is not possible but that's amazing you know. no that's but that's good yeah he's he's definitely i feel like he is like um our great artist you know like he he, he is um, his vision is insane even those like Dante, um you know, like live stream performances or whatever were amazing. Yeah. Like he's, it's, you know, it was, it was, yeah, he's really exciting. Um, and uh, nobody else totally. can, when it's, he's the only one who's, I think, matched the intersection. This is what, like with the poptimism thing, I guess we were talking about before, where he's, he's met in the middle and not even met in the middle. He's doing both simultaneously of making mainstream music and, and frankly, for, and maybe not anymore, but for a long time, molding it in his own image while mm -hmm. making, genuinely thought-provoking challenging and controversial art and that's yeah. so sick um De definitely and the, and the other thing too is like i always think like i'm like you know like what would you know like i think of how like you know certain people are whatever billionaires and so on and i think like you know what would be the sickest thing for a billionaire to do and it would be like to like live out this like insanely ambitious like you know world historical style like art project you know and it's like uh it's just incredible nothing 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 else to say about it it's like no. uh, incredibly exciting to me well and uh, it's it, it's pretty funny that like he goes in six month cycles where you need to be careful that you say you like him and then it's cool it's okay I'll, to say I'll, you like him i'll always and, and well actually you know growing up i didn't like him actually and i and like um um because i was really i just liked the trap music you know but i i um but yeah, once I once I once I sort of came around and realized I was wrong, like I I've had no no qualms. I also, I mean, I love uh, um, the uh, like I love the Sunday service stuff. I thought Jesus yeah. is King was like because that was you know I I'm 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 all about kind of like re not reclaiming Christian art, but like I I've wondered why. Like I just think it, he's the only Christian artist who's sort of like simultaneously like praising God and, and making you know art that 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 at least in some ways glorifies him, but is also like aesthetically pushing a form forward and stuff. And so I think, yeah, a hundred percent. And yeah. like, uh, you ever listen to like Christian rock radio? I work at a liquor store right now and we are only allowed to listen to the radio. So I'll, I'll kind of fuck around and, and test out some stations. And I spent eight hours by myself listening to Christian rock radio. And it all sounds like, um, this, the song from the end of the fast and furious movie where Paul Walker dies, but with the word Jesus superimposed into it, basically. 
I, I haven't, I, I can't, I can't recall that song, the Fast and Furious one, but I, uh, it's I've just very sac- saccharine, you know, um, yeah, pop music, yeah. They're, they're imitating pop music from like five or 10 years ago or whatever, and just kind of doing that. And, um, and it's yeah, it's it's sad. My my yeah. my wife sometimes listens to it because when we started dating, um, I would like listen. I like the Mountain Goats, or at least I I used to, and and I would like listen to them. And she would like you know his voice would like great on her ears, and I would say stuff like, oh, I just really like the lyrics or the songwriting or whatever. And um, and then now when she listens to Christian radio, she's like, I just like the lyrics and stuff. You know, so I'm like, all right, all right. So I've listened to my fair share of it. No, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't like it. And I think it's sort of, uh, I don't want to say a disgrace, but, you know. It's, it, I'd say it's, it's a shame because it's a yeah, very, it's, it's, it's a very certain. powerful um, uh, baseline for creating something like powerful. Clearly, if you look at the history of art, it's obviously true. It's only <laughs> someone recently that that through thread, like that, that, that art became inherently secular right um, right right but uh, no yeah you're totally right it inspired some of the greatest art ever i remember before before i became a christian i was in italy um and, and i was like walking around looking at the art and i remember just thinking like and at that time i had never had like uh any kind of like visceral reaction to art like i would just look at it and i would just think sort of like in uh, i don't know if you've read ben learner's leaving the atosha station but like he talks about how he thought people were lying when they said they had a profound experience of art, you know? And yeah, I feel, I feel look- that way. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. You see people looking at a painting and crying and he just think, you know, this narrator would be like, what the hell, you know, this person must be faking or, or something like that. Um, but when I was there and I saw some of the art, I was like, like it moved me. I was like blown away. And I was like, what was in people's heads that was, that was causing them to make this insane art, you know? Um, and that, yeah, and that that was like a, a moment I remember for sure. Yeah. And so yeah. from that to Christian Christian rock, I just want to like put my head in my hands, you know. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and then that ties into the the I guess like Christian rock is like inherently dictated by an existing market rather than um, being in clearly being. I, I've watched some of the the contemporary Christian films as well. I don't know if you've seen any of these. Oh, like- uh, I watched God's Not Dead like a week ago. Bro, sorry, tell me about it. Me and my buddy uh, who's staying with me, he's not here now, but he, uh, he, uh, I went and visited him in Texas and we watched like the first three God's Not Dead like back to back to back because we were just like, um, I love cringe, you know what I mean? I was like, yeah. this is like the perfect bridge of like Christianity and cringe. It, like I was, um, that scene where the, where Kevin Sorbo like approaches him in the hall and like, puts his hand on his arm he's like hey listen like in that classroom i'm god or whatever and i like threw my hat like oh this is crazy yeah i was i watched it alone and i was completely like losing my mind i was like so stoked yeah so good i could not i we gotta watch four my he's uh i gotta remind him we gotta watch four because i i was like um yeah, I've been for a while after that. I was telling everyone, I was like, you gotta watch. This is recently, this is a month or two ago. Yeah. I was like, you gotta watch God's Not Dead. It's like, it's so crazy. It's so good. Yeah. That scene was, where yeah. like, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I, I was go just, ahead. The, the, yeah, the, I was like, just, I popped off in my, uh, in my boys' group chat when, when I was watching it. I was like, boys, you know, because I got some, you know, some sort of LARP, semi LARPy, uh, uh, fans of Christianity in, in, in my boys' chat. And I was like, boys, you gotta watch this, man. Like, yeah gotta watch gotta watch it It, um it uh that scene where uh where the professor flips the board and he's like Karl Marx Sigmund Freud like Bertolt Brecht for Michel Foucault I think he says he's like what do these people have in common you know he's like they're atheists or whatever it's like uh it's a great it was a movie like specifically designed for me I felt like because it was like philosophy and it was so over the top and uh you know and then also by the end i was like really 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 like rooting for the kid you know to like because like his girlfriend left him like all this stuff i don't know i just loved it i love yeah it. i'm so yeah. glad well, you brought Kevin it. sorbo like <laughs> sucks like that guy sucks obviously yeah he's a demon they they uh and of course it's like basically just 
propaganda but like um it, well and it, it ends with i love the ending with the uh sort of call to action it's so fun man i, lo- I loved it yeah. yeah um yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's yeah. funny that's funny that god's i haven't exactly. I, I forgot about it uh but i had like a 48 hour obsession with it you know yeah that's amazing man i i'm so glad you brought that up because i'm gonna tell my friend kevin i'm gonna remind him we gotta watch four yeah i might um, i might have to throw that on this evening the second one Dude, the second one, the second and the third are 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 worth watching, in my opinion. They grow um, in scale, is what I've gathered, right? Like they go to like the fucking White House or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Oh my definitely. god. Who was the Who was the president at the time that the second one came out? That's a good question. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, the second one goes like even harder into like the same similar kind of like propaganda mode. Um, it's like this woman. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't need to give it away. But then the third one is sort of like, it almost seemed like they had read the, because I had read some of the reviews too. It seems like they had read the reviews that were like, this is just Christian persecution, paranoia, and like propaganda and so on. It seems like they read those reviews, and then the third one is like weirdly self-critical. Like it's sort of like um, they like, it's it's great. It's 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 a journey. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like, yeah, maybe there is some other, uh, good contemporary Christian art. There, there, uh, the thing that sort of got me into it was, um, I watched left behind with Nicolas Cage. Oh yeah. You know what? I was, uh, yeah, I downloaded that, uh, shortly after watching God's not dead. Yeah. I didn't watch it though. Let's yeah. Go. Let's go. It's, uh, that's a critically a panned movie, deeply critically panned. Oh. Yeah, as it should be. I mean, it, 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 but I loved, I absolutely loved it. And, uh, and then there's another left behind with Kirk Cameron that involves like this global conspiracy and stuff like that. It's, um, and yeah. the one with Kirk Cameron's like more formal, like it's not as, as, cause I, I know the one with Nicolas Cage is like a, a true studio film or whatever, right? And then, right, right. And it's also just aggressively bad acting, like, and, 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 and story. Like it's just, it's so, yeah absurd and it's, um, they're based on a, almost, a series of of like uh young adult uh christian fantasy novels right something like that yeah yeah they're they're about it's they're, they're about like the the rapture as like conceived of by like um you know there's this 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 idea that like you know one day uh, the believers will like get sucked up into the sky and like everyone else will be like left on earth is like actually it's basically an invention of this like British um, uh, academic named John Darby from like the late 1800s or early 1900s I can't remember but it's like recent and like a lot of American Christians believe this um, but um but the movies are based on that, yeah, where it's like people get sucked up into the sky and then there's like the aftermath, you know? So it's crazy. Yeah, I, I'm gonna, I gotta watch that one too. That sounds fun. It's really fun. Yeah, definitely. I was, I was, um, I don't know. I was, yeah, for a while, we can get off this subject, but for a while, I was like obsessed with that stuff. I even got like a Pure Flix subscription, which is like, which is like Christian Netflix. Oh man. And, um, Fuck. Okay. <laughs> yeah, dude. But I was like, but, um, but I was trying to like, I think I was getting a bit, bit too big brained. I was trying to like explain to my wife and some other people why I liked it. And I was saying that it's almost like, um, you know, like Bertolt Brecht had this idea of like, of like alienation in the theater that like, you know, in order for like class consciousness to emerge from like a truly proletarian theater or something like, you have to like alienate the viewers and they become like aware of the artifice and then you can like realize something or other about whatever class blah 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 yeah but i was thinking that these these christian movies they make you so aware of the artifice of the film that it's like i don't know it's almost like post irony or something it's so crazy i don't i don't i don't know but i'm yeah. so intrigued by it and figure out why yeah yeah because god's not dead like struck me as like a movie that like a um was made for people that hadn't seen other movies you, you know what right. i mean like 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 uh like that's the only possible way like who's i because it's it's so blatantly propagative right like but it I mean, could the, the only possibly other... succeed in anybody who's I mean, the... questioning or whatever like that movie is not going to convince anyone right 
Right, it, right. It, it, will, but it, will re, it might reinforce a certain set, but but I always think that the whatever that movie is propagating is such a small, small, although it made a shit ton of money, so I don't know. But It made so it made a shocking amount of money. Yeah, I was looking on Wikipedia. Um, I think it grossed like $60 million or something on like a $2 yeah. million budget. I can't remember exactly. But, it was something um, like that, yeah. Yeah, but, um, but I was also thinking that, you know, like it's like I encounter cringe like all, you know, I mean, um, all the time, I mean, especially some of the best stuff was like um, the vaccine propaganda where it was like, um, like one of the, one of the, it was like on Stephen Colbert, they had like um, people dressed up as, uh, you know, as like syringes and like dancing and singing this like eerie song about the vaccine. Yeah, that, yeah. Sometimes I think like if something confirms your like ideological bias, you just like, you're almost like there's a spell cast over you. You just don't understand that what you're watching is like totally insane cringe, you know? Yeah, I wonder that too, especially with the the sort of like we're in the death knell of, of cable television, um, which is uh, pretty specifically like DNC, um, at least uh, except for Fox News, obviously. But like, you, you know what I mean? Uh, and I'm not American, right. so I don't feel entirely, uh, you know, like. No, you're, 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 you're absolutely right. You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah, like there's the, yeah, I know the Stephen Colbert clip you're talking about. And there was like the Jimmy Fallon, Meg The Stallion, and Ariana Grande song called, like I want like a booster for Christmas or something. <laughs> I don't know why I saw that one. Oh, dude, you gotta look it up. It's uh, it has like like twelve million plays on Spotify or something, and I don't know if they were like hate listens or what, but I was like, damn, that's insane. Um, I'll check it out. But uh, yeah, like I, I will. I just wonder, like, do you think? And it's making me think. Do you think you have a blind spot? That like, yeah, I'm sure. I guess you wouldn't know because you're blind to it theoretically. But <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. But um, but yeah, almost certainly. You know. Um, yeah. I don't know what it is. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got to figure that out. I don't know. Like my my gut reaction is rap music, but I don't know what about it I would be blind to. You know what I mean? Well, dude, I mean one, one weird, strange kind of thing that happened to me recently is like, yeah, wait, sorry, you cut out for a second. Yeah, we're good. Can you hear me? Yeah, we're good. Okay, okay. Um, one weird thing that happened to me recently is like, you know, I I grew up loving trap music, like I said, and, and um recently i i I think in part due to like so many rappers dying or getting killed or you know like young thug and gunna just got the rico case and i think like a part of me just like it like dawned on me the other day that i was like listening to people just like rapping about like murdering people and like you know like like stealing from people and so on and i was like um i don't know for me i was like oh it might not be the best for me to be like just like pumping this stuff into my head like you know all the time or whatever especially because like um yeah i don't know but i but i don't know that that's i'm sure i've got some we got blind spots i hope i do because then you know um yeah because then you, you get to enjoy things yeah well and well and and i have stuff to work on i mean i, I think i think in part it's like i i know that like i can always be more forgiving or or like loving or like patient or you know like all these like there are like virtues or whatever that i don't that i can't manifest in my life you know as 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 well as i as i might or whatever and so there's at least that kind of stuff but no i'm sure that there's all kinds of things that i don't understand about about myself and that could be better yeah yeah that's good um (laughs) yeah i uh I was gonna I think I think it was the I listened to a couple podcasts. I guess there was only two I found that you're on. You're on the Red Scare and you're on another one that was recorded a while ago. Called uh-huh. One One Story. I listened to part of that today. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Nice. And but on one of them, uh you said you watched Top Gun uh recently. Yep. And uh do yep. you see Top do you see Top Gun too? Yeah, yeah. We just went and saw it in the theater the other day. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you think? Um I thought the flying scenes were actually really sweet. Like I was sort of, um, I thought they were really cool. 
but besides that i was like uh i thought it was kind of kind of terrible but it but the flying scenes were worth it and the scene where they're like shirtless on the beach playing football was pretty funny too. yeah i was waiting because i remember <laughs> watching the first one and thinking this it was deeply homoerotic and then i went and saw the second one and i was like where when is when are they going to do it are they going to do it and they, they did it and they, they fully did it. Well, they, they did it but then they then they had the the girl like you know looking on with a kind of like ooh, like expression you know like yeah. look at those look at those men you know yeah um, it, it was so secular uh and like like a apolitical considering it was about the navy which i actually thought was like it was a very smart business decision but was was odd like like very noticeable the the um the i saw I, I saw stuff online saying like that it was like anti china or something i didn't understand how how no it was way. like that at all like um i was sort of looking forward to like uh yeah i i just i thought that it would be more somehow like aggressively pro-america or i yeah i wasn't sure i wasn't sure it just seemed to be like about like sweet like a sweet mission you know yeah exactly which is, is <laughs> fun you know but like uh i because i always enjoy aggressively pro-american things like from like mostly from like a um that doesn't exist in we don't we don't we don't really in canada it's not like that you know right the same extent. right like i'm sure if you probably know some canadians we don't we're not the most like we don't have that same uh like vigor or whatever right right um sure. so we're losing finding... we're, it's it's a oh yeah yeah we're we're, we're uh we're losing it you know um, but, the, but then but then that if, by virtue of losing it there are people who like will go like super hard to 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 keep that vigor or fervor or whatever alive um yeah but watching these artifacts of that that american fervor is is awesome like i love movies about uh presidents and stuff like like even like aaron sorkin's kind of uh uh love of america is something that like i love i don't know why but he, he's the guy that did uh the west wing yeah is that exactly. right yeah that's right i like the west wing yeah when i watched it a while ago yeah yeah he's a he's a pretty like now polarizing writer i guess but uh in what way uh i don't know like i don't really get like it's because he's like he's a hard democrat but then like his some of his stuff hasn't aged well by certain metrics of uh you know certain lenses and then also like yeah it's it's yeah he's like kind of like the uh what's the term like uh like a man like a mansplain style writing i think would be what people would probably call it oh, okay. yeah okay yeah and nice. his characters just talk the whole time it's all dialogue you know that's the whole style but i find it just impressive mm -hmm. mostly yeah i haven't watched i haven't watched wesley in a while but i i, I definitely enjoyed it when i watched it, yeah sure. um okay uh that's that's about all i gotta gotta say from my notes and stuff i don't know i kind of went off book pretty much but that's good nice that was uh, fun yeah sweet okay i'm gonna stop recording uh thanks for sure. Thank you. I appreciate it.